What's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I have a book review for you and it's going to be for Beast of Prey by Ayana Gray. So please stay tuned. And I am back and also if you're new to my channel, welcome. So like I said before, I'll be doing a book review for this amazing book, Beast of Prey by Ayana Gray. This book comes out September 28th. So if you haven't done so, I suggest you go ahead and pre-order this. But anywho, let's go ahead and get into this review. So I have recently read this book um, about a couple weeks ago and I was enthralled with it. I could not put this book down because I wanted to know more about what happens next. It's you can't put this book down. It's unputdownable pretty much and I wanted to continue on with the characters. Now for this book it is infused with pan-African influence excuse me, and then also it is it is um, pretty much a patriarchal society within this book. Um, so when you uh, read about the world and stuff like that, it is a patriarchal society. But with that, it is filled with black girl magic, mythical creatures, and enemies to lovers. And a lot of people love that, right? Which I do too. I love having some type of lovers within, uh, within a journey or whatever. Um, so for this book, we're following uh, at least three different points of view. We're following Adia who we will get to know more about um and then we have Ekon who is um wants to be a part of Sons of the Six um which is an organization with where they live in La Cosa and he um pretty much lives in the temple where he um with his older brother Camus and with the Sons of the Six it's pretty much a society or an organization where it shows your masculinity and uh for Ekon especially his dad was also part of Sons of the Six and he thought it would be a great honor to be a part of this organization, especially since his brother has, is also a part of Sons of the Six. So we have the Sons of the Six with Ekon, who is also a reader. He loves books. And when you think of Ekon, when you read this book, he likes to read tomes. So big, thick leather type books or whatever. So we have a reader that in this book that just loves to read and that's Ekon. And then we have Kofi who is an indentured servant for the night zoo. So with um, so with this with this book let me just go ahead and get started with um, with coffee or Kofi. She is like I said an indentured servant. She is working at the night zoo where they have these mystical creatures where they take care of them on a regular basis till they pay off their debts. She also lives with her mother. Her father um, was the reason why they were indentured servants in the first place because of the debts that they had to pay for his father for her father but her father passed away. So her and her mother are trying to work off this debt. Um, and so as she's doing so, one night as they're pretty much is like a circus in a way where they're um, showcasing these um, these mythical creatures to uh, two people that are very popular and high and powerful in these in this patriarchal society. And then all of a sudden things go bad, really bad. And the night zoo is in flames. And you and you try to figure out when you read this, you're trying to figure out like, who, who set the flame? Who did this? And then you get a little sneak peek of like something happening with um, Kofi and her emotions and everything like that, which gets into the character with Adia, who is a point of view who we read back before Ekon and Kofi were even, ex even existed. Adia is a Daraja. A Daraja is a person filled with what they what we consider nowadays magic but in this book it's called splendor where they have this energy and they express and then this energy they have to release it before it consumes them and overpowers them so um and with this they the Daraja was trained with the brothers of the temple and uh, Adia was the most powerful one and we try to figure out what happened to Adia so we get we have these different points of view and then we get to Ekon where we have his background where he likes to read he counts in his head and stuff like that on rare occasions when he's nervous or ex anxious excited or just worried in general and then as the night zoo is in flames that's when the the points of view start to collide and combine together where um and the night zoo since everything's up in flames some of the dentured servants the slate or different indentured servants are trying to escape some don't escape successfully some do successfully which is adia but her mother was left behind now, I don't want to get into the details because I do not want to spoil this all for you, but I'm going to give you just a review of this book because it's really, really great. And I 
even with this review, I don't know if I can do it justice because it's really that good. Um, but anyway, Adi escapes. And this when Ekon, who's trying to be the son of the six, is trying to prove his masculinity and trying to prove that he is a part of this great society of men. And so he tries to get her. But as they as he try, tries to capture her and take her back to the night zoo, there's this mythical creature they call the Shatani. And he was scared for his life because the Shatani is a mythical creature that has been killing thousands of the Lakosa people for centuries, like centuries. And he was frightened and he knew that his life was like his life was over. But that wasn't the case. The Satani just left and ran away, away from him um, out of for no for nothing. But then he noticed that Kofi had said something to the creature and he's trying to figure out how did she do that? So eventually she comes to the point where where she was captured by the um the owner of the night zoo he found her as you know they were he was trying to put together his night zoo and try to figure out how he gets his money back and all that that he invested in um but the the owner of the night zoo his name is boz and so he's like okay well since you try to escape um you pretty much will be staying here and paying off your debt pretty much till you're like 32 30, 32 to 40 years old and she's saying, our, saying to herself, literally, our debts were about to be paid within months and days. And now I'm going to be there with, the, with the, in years now? That's her whole life. And she tried to figure out a way to do so. Try to get her and also her friend, um, who she figures is her brother, which I don't remember at the top of my head, tries to get their debts paid so that they can be free and not be indentured servants any longer. And she figures like, okay, the night zoo. Boz like Boz likes have mythical creatures in his night suit. What if I told him I could capture the Shatani? So that was his that was her deal of capturing the Shatani Shatani for him in order for her mom and her brother, her so-called brother, not really her brother, debts to be paid off along with her. So all their debts would be paid off as long as she captured captured the Shatani. But she had no she didn't know how to do so. And then we have Ekon, where he is approached after he pretty much um, let um, let Kofi Kofi escape from the night zoo, and he pretty much and the leader the Kohoni okay, Kohoni I believe said that he could not be and does not he doesn't have the will of becoming the part of the sons of the six, so he would no longer he wouldn't be able to join the organization that he was looking forward to this entire time because his father was sons of the six and then his big brother was also part of sons of the six so he's trying to figure out my gosh like this was all i wanted to prove that i'm strong i'm masculine i can do this i'm if you, you can give me more responsibilities and even his brother camo said like well you let her go but maybe just maybe you can do something in order to prove that you are part that you are part of the sons of the six and that you deserve to be part of it and his brother said, oh, you should be able to, you should try to capture the Shatani. Or I believe Ekon thought of that because Kamu told him secrets about the society of what they were doing with, and he wasn't supposed to do that because um, Ekon's brother, big brother, is the captain of the Sons of the Six. So Ekon was like, what if I grab, what if I captured it before you all? And I proved to them that I can be the Son of the Six. And his brother was like, okay, do that. But you need to come up with a plan. So that's when we have Kofi and Ekon come together they meet each other at the temple because Kofi needs something to get her through this jungle called the uh, the greater jungle which the Shatani Shatani lives um and um Ekon he also is trying to figure out certain ways to do that he also needs a map of the junk greater jungle which he knows of because he's read all these amazing books in the temple so they collide and they meet together and then they soon team to get team up together and they run into the jungle the greater jungle and they start to encounter a lot of mythical creatures and also um magical trees they cut uh, spiders it gets really good like I, I'm thinking to myself like oh my gosh even the spider got me a little bit um because it reminded me of like um I know people don't discuss Harry Potter but the spider reminded me of like how the spider spoke to Ekon um and uh coffee in this it reminded me how the, the spider spoke in Harry Potter so that sort of gave me the like the little bit of Harry Potter vibes in that when it comes to that scene with the spider um, and then we end up getting to meet one of the gods or goddesses, which is Badwa. And Badwa is pretty much the protector of the greater jungle. 
and she pretty much tells coffee that she is a Daraja and like I've said before Daraja are people with splendor magic but they call it splendor and she tried to figure out how how did how did I become a Daraja how did I how did I inherit this and she's trying to backtrack onto her family and she couldn't think of it and she was thinking of her mom like how come her mom didn't say anything to her about it um so she was just confused but excited at the same time that she had this gift and she wanted to use it as the best as she could so Badwa who is the goddess who protects the greater jungle was training her to do so and try to tell her that you cannot keep the splendor within you because it will consume you once you take it in you have to let it go you have to release it you can't just hold it in like for so long you know what I mean um so she was training but Baba also is warning her of a certain person that also did the same thing where they held in the magic and didn't release it and that was Adia and then the the and with Adia, pretty much her punishment, pretty much sort of to consume that, um, pretty much had changed her. But within this part of we have Adia, when we see her point of view, she also meets a boy named Zakari. And she's enthralled with him. But then we know who, who Zakari was and what, how he seemed. And so Adia did something where she tried to make sure this person, Zakari, who is not who he seems, not take this magic and use it against the people of the Kosa in the world. So she consumes this power, doesn't release it, and she she becomes something. Something that everybody wants. Everybody that everyone's invested in, in finding. So we have that and that's when uh, that's when Coffee is like, oh my gosh, seriously? That's what it is? And then Badwa also told her about her brother Kadu, Kadu, who is trying to change the world because it's consumed with nothing but destruction and he and Kadu he wants to put it in his hands to change the world and the structure everything because he feels like they're the humans of this world is destroying it and his and then you have Badwa, his sister, who can't do so much because he is so strong. And Ka and Badwa and Kadu, they have other siblings, but they're like, like, somewhere else. Like, they don't see any of this happening. They're like, in their own worlds. They're not paying attention to what's happening in Lakosa, of the patriarchal society, any of that. So, pretty much, instead of hunting for the Shatani, they're trying to save, Ekon and Kofi are trying to save the Shatani. But with that, but as she's trying to save, or they both are trying to save them, Ekon is still trying to figure out what he wants to do. Capture the Shatani so that he could be Sons of the Six, or save the Shatani and be with some, be with a person that he's actually starting to be enthralled with, which is coffee. Kofi. So we have that. And then out of nowhere, his brother starts, finds them in the greater jungle and they capture them and immediately Kofi felt betrayed because Ekha knew all along that the Sons of the Six were also trying to hunt the Shatani and she just looked at him completely differently. She just looked at him like, are you kidding me? I was falling for you and this is what you do to me? But at the same time, Ekon realized what he had done wrong and with that, as the Shatani is captured, as Kofi is captured, things start to go down and everything like that and then all out of nowhere Kadu comes out of out of the blue I'm being I'm not trying to give you I'm not trying to give y'all spoilers so I'm just giving you a broad review because I feel like you have to read this it's so good like it's not predictable at all as like some like some fantasy books this is so unpredictable like I thought of the whole time it was this person who was this person but it really wasn't that at all I was just blindsided I'm like what even my husband was like what's wrong with you I'm like like I just told him this book is good it's 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 got me all over the place all my emotions are up and down I'm just I was this book is amazing but like I said you have all these different points of view coming together as one and then we come to an ending which lives which which leaves us at a cliffhanger so it makes you want to know more about what's happened to Kofi what's happened to Kadu what's happened to Ekon you but at the end you will you will see and read someone has made a major 
major sacrifice and that also left me in tears I kid you not I was crying and my husband like why are you crying what's wrong with you I'm like something happened to this person and I don't know like why and I'm thinking to myself okay I'm sort of a little tearing up now I'm like I'm thinking to myself like okay maybe in the second book this person will come back maybe she's not you know but it is what it is so it left it left us at a cliffhanger and I'm like man I need the second book already in my hands <laughs> but I have to wait because the first book hasn't even been, has even been released yet um but I gave this a five or five stars because it was that great I can't think of my favorite characters all the characters were very great I feel like Ekon as they were uh, going into this journey into the greater jungle he's more of a planner he's by the book like tactics okay we gotta do this we gotta do this we have to go that way before we go this way as in opposed to Kofi she is spontaneous she like she just goes with the flow she's like I'm just gonna do this there's no plans intended for Kofi and uh, that that annoyed Ekon to the fullest but then he also loved it at the same time so that's how they started to like hmm I'm actually starting to like this person because they're definitely different from who I am and I actually like it we're opposites but opposites attract right <laughs> so that's where the enemies to lovers comes into play so and just the part of um Ekon being a book lover that's also amazing black girl magic where we have the Darajas it's amazing and I also love the fact that it's not called magic it's called splendor in this book in this book you know like it's not the typical oh she has magic no she has splendor which I love that splendor it sounds so like I don't even know it just sounds like so I can't even think of it it's just it just it's amazing I just love it the fact that instead of magic it is splendor it gives that that extra something right um but yeah so five or five stars for beast of prey by ayana gray i hope i gave you the best review i could possibly give you i wanted to be a little bit broad i didn't want to didn't want to spoil you or anything like that because i don't want i want you to experience this book as you read this because it takes you on a journey solely you get to meet all these creatures and these people and on top of that Kofi meets her ancestors in a way which is so amazing especially when I tell you it is influenced with pan-african um pan-african influence because when you think about it like us you know black girl magic black girls we don't know much about our ancestors but when Kofi meets her ancestors face like like that like that's a that's amazing right knowing your ancestors knowing your history and I think that's also what inspired coffee and motivated coffee to learn more about her splendor and what she could do with it um and also find, trying to figure out who in her family is a Daraja because she has no idea because her father's gone he passed away and then we have and then we have um and then we have her mother which she really didn't tell her much about her family history but on top of that, we get to know more about Ekon's history and his past as well and why he counts in his head like one to three, right? We get to learn more about Ekon and the devastations and he pretty much has like PTSD, post-stress, post uh, I can't even, it's like post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, so I, I can, I consider that he has that and that's why he counts in his head because he was traumatized by what he had seen, but it wasn't really what he saw. And he, all this time he felt like the death of his father was his fault, but it wasn't. And we figure out who really was responsible for Ekon's death. And we also see things in the patriarchal society of the temple um, of the Six of the Suns and what they have really been doing for centuries and and what, and what have you. It's like really dark too. It like it's really dark really quickly in the very end, which is amazing too. Um, but it is a very, it's an eye opener when you read the ending. I'm like, wow, I did not see that coming. Um, but I, like I said, a five out of five stars. Um, I really hope you pre-order this book. If you haven't done so, I suggest you do so. It is amazing. Um, Ayana has done a great job with this book. Um, I was also part a lot of the lives that they had done with Penguin Teen and how she expressed this book and how she wrote this book. It makes it makes me want to I'm definitely going to be rereading re it because it's that great. I already pre-ordered my hardcover copy so I'm excited to see that um, but yeah 
September 28th is when this book is released and I definitely think you should go out and read it. I really wanted to do this review before it came out because I figure like people are sleeping on this book um, and they definitely should uh, go ahead and pre-order it and when it comes out pick it up whenever they can. Also before I go I would like to say thank you so much for Penguin Teen for pretty much uh, sending me this uh, arc of Be of Prey by Ayana Gray. I really am so happy that I received this and I thank you so much for it. I, I also thank, thank you Ayana for writing this amazing book because it's definitely a book that I plan on reading more than once. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You're very talented and I look forward to reading more of your great work. Um, but that is it you guys. That is my little review. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching you guys and please stay healthy and stay safe. See ya!